If you're new to my YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon to get notifications of all my uploads throughout the week. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today um, I wanted to have a play and create another mixed media art tag. Um, and I've got these two um, dinky stamps from Indigo Blue that I picked up when I was down there at the last DT meeting. I um, haven't done anything with them, haven't touched them at all since I picked them up. And I wanted to have a go at creating something with them, but using um, something which I haven't used for quite some time, which would be embossing powder. So I'm going to try and incorporate the stamps, the embossing powder. I've got some white gesso, again from Indigo Blue, um, and I've got some vintage photo distressing. And I've also got a script stamp from Indigo Blue too, which I'm going to have a go at doing something with in the background and then creating a kind of, I don't know. I'm not, well, I have kind of got an image in my head of what I want to create, but the reality of the situation is it could go either very, very well, or it could go very, very badly. So let's have a go. Let's just jump right in. So, tag made from grunge board. So it's just grey grunge board. Uh, this was on the back of a pad of writing paper. Um, so it's not that thick. Only a couple of millimetres, about an eighth of an inch. Not even that I would have said actually. Um, so not particularly too thick. So open up my gesso. Just, just, just. So I do have a pot of water just to the side of me here and an emergency roll of kitchen towels just in case it all goes badly wrong. So I'm just going to give the tag a coating of gesso just to give myself a little bit of playroom so that the colours that I'm going to add will spread a little bit easier. That's the theory anyway. And also get rid of that grey nastiness underneath. You may like the grey nastiness, I don't. So I'm not particularly bothered about hiding the brush strokes. I'm going to grunge up the sides anyway with the Distress Ink so it doesn't have to be brilliantly perfect. Just moderately so. Moderately perfect. There you go. And that's the thing with playing with grunge, is that you can get away with almost anything. Almost anything. Right, just give that a quick blast with the heat gun. That'll do. It's dry. So now in with the vintage photo. Let's load that up and then let's start adding in some grunge. I'll bring it quite far in. Around the edges. That just so helps it spread just that little bit further. Could have done this with archival if I'd wanted to, but you know, my distress inks are just sitting there, all neglected, and they've been moaning at me about being underused, underappreciated. So I thought, well, you know, let's give them an outing and it'll shut them up. It'll stop them from wittering. Yeah, nice and grungy. Okay. So I need to get this dry. Make sure that it is completely dry. Okay. That to one side, that to one side, that to one side. Could do with cleaning that up, but I'm not going to because I'm being lazy. Let me just grab some scratch paper. Oops. 
Okay, so do I add scripty in the background? Because nobody wants upside down scripts. Let me grab a stamp block. Now then, talking of stamp blocks and indigo blue. There we go. So traditionally, he says making a noise, excuse the head. I would use a stamp block like this, which is quite thick acrylic perspex or whatever you want to call it in whatever culture you're in. Indigo Blue came up with a set of these. They call them Slim Jims. It's not an advert, but uh, the benefit of having a thin plate over a thick plate is this. Is that can you see, when you've got a larger area, it's actually easier to hold. Much easier to hold than a big thick one. So if you've got a large block, something that would normally hold that size stamp, like this one, a big thick acrylic block look, same size, the thinner one is actually easier to hold and handle. So sometimes, if you pardon the expression, thicker isn't always best. Stop it. I can hear you sniggering all the way across here. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to put it on that Slim Jim and I'm going to grab the distressing again and I'm going to give that using exactly the same colour and I'm not even bothering to ink it up properly. And I'm not using my stamp press because I'm going to do it by hand. Okay, me likey that. And then again, this way up. Drop it down. Give it a push. liking the fact that it's not come out there and then just ink up the top just so that I can get that in at the bottom there we go like that those Slim Jims by the way are small ones going right the way up to the big one that's the size of the tag which is four by eight so you can see it's almost eight inches just drop that onto a ruler it's actually I'm lying to you it's actually just over seven there you go there you go all right so and now have tag need to get that dry. Alrighty then. So, dinky scroll. Let's grab that. Let's grab that and let's grab that other Slim Jim. Slim Jim. That's what they used to call me back in the day. Slim Jim. Before I got old and fat. Right, okay, so where's those? grapes they're at the bottom there so that's pretty much the right way up then okay so i want i want i want i want darker brown so i'm going for coffee and the only reason i've gone for this coffee archival ink is because i know it's darker and i could see it out of the corner of my eye and it was saying, use me, use me. That's what I am doing. Because there's not worse than a jealous stamp. There you go. It didn't want Vintage Photo to have all the glory. So 
to, I was able just to rock it slightly because it's on a raised edge, so that gives me a little bit of playroom. I like that. I like it, I like it. I like it, I like it. No, stop it. I think I've had too much coffee today. You can probably tell. All right, so. Away with you, Mr. Coffee. Uh, let's give that a blast as well, just to make sure it's all nice and dry. Hot, hot. Okay, that's dry. Could have kept that for a junk journal. Anyway, anywho. Right, so now let's find a stamp block big enough for the penny. My penny farthing. Right, okay, so before I go any further, I did have a while ago, a few years ago, one of those anti-static starch bags that you could rub over everything to make sure that your embossing powder doesn't stick to anywhere that you don't want it to. I can't find it for the life of me because I haven't seen it for years. Which means, sorry, apple and mango juice. <coughs> I really don't want to be drinking any more coffee. Um, so instead, what I've got is I'm going to use some baby powder and a microfiber cloth. So I just have to go and grab the baby powder and I'll be right back. Okay, microfiber cloth. Yes, it is a bit scuzzy. It's because this is what I used to dust in my craft room. And some tahalki powder. And this is Johnson's baby powder. So it has that beautiful baby's bottom softness and smell. That came out all wrong. You know what I mean. Don't judge. So all I'm going to do is just lightly rub that baby powder. It's addictive, this stuff. It's the smell. I'm sure they put something in it. Okay, so I'm just going to rub the baby powder over it just to get rid of any of those final kind of areas that might have had a little bit of moisture stuck to them. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, but up at the top, look, there's a fingerprint. Can you see that? And the baby powder has picked it up. It's clever stuff. That's how people get caught out in murders. Okay, let's get rid of that distressing. And then bring in the Versamark, my disgusting, grungy Versamark. Really, really, really ought to have invested Actually, do you know what? Let's bring the stamp platform out because I want to make sure I get a decent coverage on this. And those imaginets will help hold everything down in place. I'll just use the three. Okay, where's that stamp? So I want the stamp to be about there, so I'll just very, very lightly. Okay. And then I can add some more of that Versamark gunk onto the stamp and then go back down. Okay, so, being a complete idiot, I didn't make sure that I got the penny farthing straight. But it'll do. We're only playing, aren't we? Ooh, hang on. Let's take that off first. Let's bring back that scrap paper. Ooh, nearly made rookie mistake. There we go. 
Rookie mistake. Or in my case, a mucky mistake. Et voila. Ish. That'll do. We're only having a play when all's said and done. And let's face it, if it's rubbish and looks terrible, there's only you and me that have seen it, so, you know, it'll be our little secret. Heat gun. Let's just hope it doesn't pack up, because it's been threatening. It would have been better if I'd have got it straight. What an idiot, but never mind. There we go. So, what else? Do I want to add onto the tag? Let's see. Let's add something from here. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Do do do. Life was meant for a great adventure. There you go, you see, first few lines. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump to the ones at the back because I want it in black because my penny farthing's in black. Life was meant for a great adventure. Come on. Oh, these aren't dark up very well. Mr. Holtz. There we go. And then I'm going to put that underneath. See, theoretically, what I should have done is put that a little bit skew with, because nobody would have known. And then let's put some 3D foam pads, because we're going to have a little paper doll, and we're going to sit him just on there like that. Oh. So let's have, so that's why it would have been better if it was straight, but you know, shh. I won't tell anyone if you won't. More foam pads now then. I need something to get one of them foam pads off. And his dinky foam pads. There we go. Off you come. Oh, that was the chair, not me. See? <clears throat> right, okay, what else have we got? Now, the chair is making some god awful noises. Now, I'm just having a look. Oh, there we go. Now, I received in Happy Mail a while ago some tags that somebody had die cut out. And in with those tags, there were some of these hole reinforcers. But what I didn't realise at the time was that the lovely person that sent me these had also put them on... What did I do with that scalpel? Did you see where I put it? There you go. Thank you. Um, I'd put double-sided adhesive on the back which was really, really, really kind. And I had no problem doing this yesterday. There we go. And the done one in black, which is super, super, super. Now you can see, I put the hole reinforcing around there and the hole isn't the right size, but it just so happens, he says, 
Now I did have this to hand, there it is. It just so happens that I purchased one of these. It was really, really inexpensive. And it's almost the right size. There we go. And then I'm going to decorate the back in a minute. See, there's something missing up there, isn't there? There is, there's something missing. So, what shall we stick up there? I'll have to put those back in the bag later. Just push them to one side for now. What's missing? I don't know. I don't know. Do we have any other bits of ephemera kicking about? Yes, we do. Look. Now this was from a pile of stuff that we'd done ages and ages. And I don't want to put a tag on a tag. That's just that's just plain silly. They look all right. I think all that's left are tag shapes in that. No. I think that'll do though. I think that will do. So let's just grab some glue. Oh, no, we're going to be fighting with that again, aren't we? Did I replace the glue? I did actually replace the glue. Now then, I got myself some... Um, here we go. Some Diane Reevely glue sticks. These are for the dialogue. Um, diary things. But these cute little glue sticks are just perfect. And they're sort of triangular shape, like the Ranger Collage glue. But just big enough for you to be able to stick bits of ephemera down. Like so. Throw that into the trash, get the other two out. And put those somewhere handy. And then what else? What else have we got? Let's see if we can find some other bits of ephemera that I might have just lying around. What's in this drawer here? It's probably all Christmas knowing me. say pen. Balance. That's what it's all about. Balance. Doing this just completely and utterly off the cuff. No real sort of plan as to what I wanted to do. I thought it might fill up that space a bit more than it actually has done, so we'll just seize what we've got amongst all our bits and pieces and see if there's anything we can stick in just to create a little bit of a 
cluster in that background. I'm not even grunging up the edges, have you noticed? <laughs> because I'm just being a rebel. Little postcard there, look. See, I think these are from that Tim Holtz ephemera set, Snippets. So these are like the really, really smaller pieces of the ephemera rather than the larger ones. And um, <clears throat> so you get smaller bits, smaller postcards. little parcel post thing. That's cute. Life was meant for great adventure. It certainly was. Is there anything else we can put in there? Oh look, got a little one that says Traveller. And I think once we've got this on, I think I'm just going to stick that at the bottom there, just underneath. And I think all I need to do now is just to put something on the back just to finish backing it. Now what have I got to hand? What have I got to hand? Here we go. A sheet of, seems we're using Tim Holtzy stuff. Tim Holtzy bits. See, I could do that. Could do that, but I don't like the fact that it's different eras. This looks more 50s and 60s to me. So I'm not going to use that side. I'm going to use this side instead. Right. Pencil. Pencil. Use the natural straight edge, scissors, you probably sat there at home going, oh my god, he's completely lost it today, lost the plot. You'll probably get no arguments from me. Now what I should have done is stuck this straight down onto the card and then trimmed it out afterwards. Because that would have been the sensible thing to do. But, as you've probably gathered, all reasonable sense has left me today. Very good. So what I'll do is we'll glue that down to do the edges. Oop. And then I will go back with a knife. scalpel craft knife and I will trim off the excess. So let's line that up at the bottom. Come on, do as you're told. Don't vex me.
Oh, vex me. Right. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> so you really see me warts and all today. Mostly incoherent. This is what coffee does to you. Sends you loopy. Come <laughs> sends me a loopy anyway. <clears throat> Just so I know where the hole is. And then let's grab another one of those hole reinforcers. Not quite the right size, but it'll do. Just finishes off a little bit. And then Distress ink again. All right. There we go. I think I'm happy with that. So I've got one last thing that I want to write on the back. So grab the food ball pen, food A, food ball, whichever way you want to put it. And I'm going to write And it's Wednesday. Is it the 28th today? It is. There we go. This is what happens when I'm left unsupervised after drinking too much coffee. Done. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.